Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. So we are going to begin this new session after uh, some kind of things that uh, that uh, was happening uh, earlier. And I hope that you are fine, that you are okay. Uh, because this is like something that we cannot uh, know where or, or when these kind of things are going to happen. It's something natural, so I hope that you are fine and everything is okay. And I hope that we don't have like this kind of activities uh, again tonight, at least tonight, uh, because it's something that we cannot like uh, really know when it's going to happen. We know that uh, our country is kind of <clears throat> almost every day happen these kind of things because. Uh, of the activity that it has, but today is, this kind of movement was kind of hard. And, but we are going to uh, begin with this uh, session because we are going to begin with the session number two of this week number three. We are in the middle of this week, so we are going to have two more sessions um, this week to complete week number three, and then we are going to work on the last week and we are almost, almost done with the uh, activities that we are going to uh, do in this uh, module and also in the platform. Uh, you know that for this week, you need to complete the section number four and also you need to complete 50% um, of the section number five if I am a... Uh, like, okay, with the information, but you need to almost complete uh, everything and I know that some of you um are done with the platform and that is uh, pretty good because you know that uh, now you are not going to um work um a lot of activities and you are going to have enough time to listen to information to check the uh, exercises to check the the information that you have on the document and for the ones that are like kind of, uh, I don't know, they are not complete with some of the activities you need to, to do it in this week because you know that uh, we are just going to have one more week to complete all the work that we have to do on the platform. So uh, we are going to focus on information. Uh, yesterday we were talking about the adjectives. Uh, we were talking about the different uh, um types of adjectives, we uh, learned something related to 13 types of adjectives, or in this case, uh, the adjectives that we can use when we are talking in English and how to use them, because we uh, saw some examples <clears throat> related to this information. And we had that a uh, table on the document, that is this one, we were working on this information yesterday and you already have this information on the document that you have uh, the link you have the link on the group of whatsapp so you can access to this information whatever you want so we have here the 13 types of adjectives in this case the most common types of adjectives you know that uh, after this one we were talking about the adjectives to talk about appearance um, positive adjectives and negative adjectives. So we have a lot of, um, we can say like a lot of uh, type of adjectives that we can use. Y también les estaba explicando que los adjetivos son una parte bastante importante de la adquisición del idioma porque forma parte de las eh, del discurso, ¿verdad? Por eso se le llama part of a speech, 
que se le llama parte del discurso a todos aquellos elementos que conforman el idioma. En ese caso, nosotros podemos encontrar adjetivos, verbos, nombres, adverbios, eh, conjunciones, interjecciones. Todo eso lo encontramos en las parts of speech. That is very, very important that we can learn um, a lot about this kind of parts that are um, important for the acquisition of the language. <clears throat> and in this case, we were like seeing the type of the adjectives and also we were talking about the information related to these uh, kind of adjectives and some examples. Then we have, let me go to the last part. We have these images. One is how to describe a person. So in this case, it's based on the description or something physical. Say the description of the people, then we have the positive adjectives to describe a person. In this case, we are going to talk about to use these words to like um, talk in a good way of someone. And then we have the negative adjective because you know that um, not everything is good in someone. Um, maybe it's something bad. So we have this list of negative adjectives Two. Now we are going to continue with this part of the uh, adjectives, but in this case, we are going to talk about something else. It is part of the topic, but at the same time, is something different. We are not going to talk about the uh, appearance. We are not going to talk about uh, words that we already know that are like beautiful, handsome, anything like that. We are going to talk about collocations. Vamos a hablar de, lo, de las colocaciones o lo que llamamos collocations. In English, we are going to see what is a collocation, uh, why we need to learn collocations, a way to learn these words, Uh, we are going to talk about the types of collocation that exist in English. We are going to see some examples, but after this information, we are going to focus on uh, collocations that has to be with adjectives. Vamos a hablar de este tema que son los collocations. Y vamos a ver por qué es importante que nosotros los conozcamos. En este caso, cuando ustedes vean la información de los collocations, pueden llegar a decir que ustedes ya conocían un poco sobre eso o que ustedes ya tenían eh, conocimiento sobre los collocations. And eh, in some uh, pages or when you are learning this topic, People say that it's very important that we can learn collocations because um, this is a very uh, useful part when you are talking with someone that is native. Uh, native speakers tend to use different uh, ways to, to talk and we need to know how to use this kind of information to transform our uh, speaking um, knowledge. They use some words that are shorter than others. Maybe they are not pronouncing the whole thing. Uh, maybe they are using this collocation. They are using um, another kind of phrases that we are not very familiar with them. Entonces, los nativos hablantes del idioma inglés utilizan diferentes frases, diferentes palabras, o hablan mucho más rápido que lo que nosotros lo hacemos y hay frases que no las dicen completas. Ahora, vamos a ver qué son estas collocations and why are, be, um, are very important for us to learn this information. So, the topic for today is collocations. After the information, we are going to have... Um, a couple of examples or exercises in which you are going to put into practice the information that we are going to hear right now. And in those exercises, you are going like to find the two parts because these uh, collocations um, function with two different words. So we are going to see what is the collocation. 
So we have the question. What is a collocation? Okay, in this case, a collocation is two or more words that often go together. Normalmente son dos o más palabras que van juntas. This combination just sound right to native English speakers who use them all the time. Esto no es que tengamos una regla específica de cómo vamos a, a crear las collocations, sino que básicamente los native speakers use them because of the sound. Si las palabras suenan bien juntas, ellos las van a utilizar como una collocation. No es como que haya una regla exacta de cómo van a utilizar o cómo lo van a crear, sino si suenan bien juntas, they are going to be together. On the other hand, other combinations may be unnatural and just sound wrong. And we are going to see some of these, like, example of these words. We're going to see some examples. We have first natural, we are going to create a table, a sure uh, table. Let me put here this one and three. We're going to see the natural English and the unnatural English. In the natural English, we have the fast train or fast food. The fast train or the, the phrase the fast food. In the unnatural uh, English, we have the quick train. And quick food. In natural English, we have a quick shower or a quick meal. And on natural English, a fast shower or a fast meal. Ok, en este caso, como estamos hablando de inglés natural y de inglés no natural, eh, acuérdense que estamos hablando de que para los native speakers, these words need to sound eh, correct or right together. It is not related to something grammatical. It's not related to something eh, like a structure or something like that. Just sound right together. Tienen que sonar bien juntas para que pueda ser una collocation. Tenemos el ejemplo de fast train. El, estamos hablando de un tren que es rápido, igual que de fast food, la comida rápida. Pero 
when we are talking about the word fast, estamos hablando de la acción de ser rápido, ¿verdad? De, de por ejemplo, de cuando corremos y somos muy rápidos o, o algo por el estilo. ¿Por qué no utilizamos the quick train? Que significa, pues, uh, decir que es algo que, que sucede rápido, que va rápido. In this case, it's not like the word quick and train, it's not going to function together. It's just the sound. If you are listening the pronunciation of the phrases, you can imagine um, yourself using the natural English phrases. The fast food, the fast train, a quick shower, a quick meal. But you are not like um, thinking about create uh, statements using the quick train or quick food. No podríamos cambiar ya el hecho de decir the fast food, la comida rápida, a la comida que es eh, pues procesada, que ya está casi lista y que cuando llegamos a un restaurante pues solo lo ponen a, a una freidora, en este caso ahora, ¿verdad? Bastante común la freidora de aire o en aceite súper caliente y ya nuestra comida está lista en un par de minutos. No podríamos decirle quick food, ya estamos acostumbrados al hecho de decirle fast food. Pero es por lo mismo, porque eh, los nativos lo encontraron mejor y que sonaban bien juntos y se quedó de esa manera. So that's why, that's why it's kind of uh, popular, this use of this kind of uh, phrases. Why learn collocations? ¿Por qué tenemos que utilizar collocations? Okay, why learn collocations? ¿Por qué es importante que aprendamos nosotros a, a utilizarlos o por qué tenemos que saber qué son las collocations? In this case, it says your language will be more natural and more easily understood. Okay, in this case, this one is very, very important when we are acquiring this language, when we are learning English. What, uh, what is the objective that you have when you are learning English? ¿Cuál es el objetivo principal de aprender inglés? Oh, I want to learn a lot of words. Quiero aprender un montón de, de, de palabras. Maybe um, I want to communicate with others. Okay, that's one. Eh, queremos comunicarnos con otras personas. But... If you want to communicate, you want it to sound like a robot, like someone that is afraid to make mistakes, or you want to sound like someone that is secure about the, the words that they are pronouncing. And that is the important thing. If you want to sound natural, you need to learn this kind of things. Si queremos sonar naturales, si queremos sonar como... No vamos a decir como unos native speakers, porque sabemos que es un proceso bastante eh, largo esto de sonar como los eh, hablantes nativos, alguien que ya nació, ¿verdad?, en ese ambiente. Primero, tendríamos que estar rodeados solo de personas que hablan el idioma. Eh, tendríamos que estar en una comunidad de habla inglesa. Eh, porque cuando estamos rodeados de personas eh, que hablan nuestro mismo idioma, eh, nos sentimos más cómodos hablando en nuestro idioma. But when we are like surrounded by people that is talking in English, we are going to focus on speaking in English and we are going to learn how to use the accent. We are going to learn how to use different phrases like these ones. And you are going to sound more natural and like um, people is going to understand very, uh, like we can say very quick, the way you are talking or expressing an idea. Next one. You will have alternative and richer ways or of expressing yourselves. In this case, it's very important also because we are going to have like um, 
different ways to express our ideas. And in this case, we are not going to use the same words every, every time that we are talking. We can have different uh, statements, different phrases that we can use to explain something. We are not going to use the same basic words. We are going to improve this part of the language. Number three, it is easier for uh, our brains to remember and use language in chunks or blocks rather than as single words. It's said that it's easy for us to remember like words that come together um, in order to just learn single words. Eh, dice, se dice que es mucho más fácil para nuestros cerebros entender palabras que vienen en grupo, en bloques o en parejas que eh, el uso de una sola palabra. Porque la palabra no estamos seguros al principio de cómo utilizarlo en una frase, cómo vamos a hacer la estructura. Pero si ya vienen unidos por bloques, pues ya sabemos que esas dos palabras van juntas y ya vamos construyendo alrededor de ese bloque, pues otras ideas. Now, another thing, how to learn collocations. ¿Cómo vamos a hacer nosotros para aprendernos las collocations? Well, in this case, we have five, six, seven, like seven things that we need to do to learn the collocations. The first one. Be aware of collocations and try to recognize them when you see them or when you hear these kind of words. Vamos a enfocarnos primero en escuchar atentamente o en leer atentamente un párrafo y vamos a tratar de encontrar dónde están las collocations. Then three collocations are single blocks of language. Think of them as individual blocks or chunks and learn and strongly support, not a strongly plus support. En este caso, tenemos que aprendérnoslo como unas, eh, un bloque completo. No lo vamos a dividir, sino así como están, así lo vamos a eh, colocar, así lo vamos a aprender como bloques, no como individuales. Give me a second.
Okay. Next one. When you learn a new word, write down other words that collocate with it. En este caso, vamos, cuando aprendamos una palabra nueva, podemos eh, escribir otras palabras que se pueden utilizar junto con esa misma palabra. Por ejemplo, remember rightly, remember distinctly, remember vaguely, remember vividly. Otras palabras que podamos utilizar con la palabra remember. Ahí lo podemos utilizar, o sea, hacer una lista, ¿verdad? Oh, I learned the word remember. Which words are going to use or uh, which words I can use with this uh, new word? Oh, I have this, 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 and this, and we can learn um, through this kind of list. Next one, read as much as possible. <clears throat> Reading is an excellent way to learn vocabulary and collocations in context and naturally. This one is a very important activity that you need to, to do when you are learning a language and is reading. You need to read a lot and you need to read different kind of books um, because you are going to find new expressions, you are going to find new words, and in this case, you can like practice searching for collocations, and, and you need to like use a uh, kids' books, uh, teenagers' books, and adult books like politics, like food, like religion, something different. You need to, to practice reading. Next one, revise what you learn regularly. Practice using new collocations in context as soon as possible after learning them. Cuando aprendamos una nueva eh, collocation, vamos a hacer un review de qué es lo que nosotros aprendimos y cómo lo vamos a utilizar en el contexto en el que nosotros nos desenvolvemos. Next one, learn collocation in groups that work for you. You could learn them by topic, time, number, weather, money, family, or by, or by a particular word. Take action, take a chance, take an exam. Aquí vamos a aprender los en grupo, ¿verdad? Vamos a tratar de buscar los collocations by group. Eh, podemos utilizarlo de dos formas. Por el tema, que el tema puede ser el tiempo, los números, el clima, dinero, familia. O también podemos hacerlo por una palabra en particular. Por ejemplo, agarramos la palabra take y buscamos qué otras palabras pueden funcionar bien con take. Y vamos haciendo las relaciones with collocation, uh, with, using this specific word. And the last one said, you can find information on collocation in a good learner's dictionary. También podemos encontrar información en un buen diccionario, ¿verdad? Que nos va a ayudar a nosotros a entender mejor el uso de los collocation. And you can also find specialized dictionaries of collocation. También hay diccionarios especializados sobre este tema.
Now, we are going to see what are the different types of collocation. There are several different types of collocation made from combinations of verb, noun, adjective, etc. And we are going to see the most common types that we have related to the collocations. And let me move this one like this. We have the first one that is an adverb plus an adjective. And we have the following example. I'm going to write here. We have completely satisfied. Aquí estamos utilizando un adverbio con un adjetivo y tenemos la frase completely satisfied, completamente satisfecho. Then we have adjective plus noun. Adjective plus noun. And in this case, we have the example excruciating pain. Next one, noun plus noun. También nombre más nombre puede ser eh, una collocation. Noun plus noun, a search of anger. Next one, a noun plus a verb. Lions roar. In this case, we use uh, this kind of expressions because we can we cannot say like lions shout. No podemos decir los leones gritan, sino que los leones pues rugen. A verb plus a noun, and it said. Commit suicide. That is not a very good like example, but it's part of this uh, information. Verb plus expression with preposition. And we have the example, burst into tears. And the last one, verb plus adverb. And we have the example, way frantically. Okay. And we are going to see the last part that are the example. Esta es la última parte de, eh, esta, del tema de las collocations, donde vamos a ver los ejemplos nada más de cada uno de ellos. Para eso voy a mover por acá y voy a poner algunos ejemplos. Luego pasamos a los ejercicios. I'm going to, no, like this, uh, this one, yes. Invading that country was an utterly stupid thing to do. In this case, the, um, the collocation is this one, utterly stupid. 
I'm going to mark the collocations in the examples. We enter, we enter a richly decorated room. Next one, are you fully aware of the implication of your actions? And we have here fully aware. Okay, next one. The doctor ordered him to take regular exercise. In this one, regular exercise is the collocation. Oh, I didn't mark the, the list like this. The Titanic sank on its maiden voyage. So in this case, maiden voyage is the collocation. And the last one. He was breathing on the ground on excruciating pain. This last one is the collocation. Okay, in this case, I'm just going to mark the uh, collocation that have an adjective. Aquí solo vamos a ver algunos de los ejemplos donde tenemos eh, involucrado adjetivos. Now, I'm going to... Put the first activity. Vamos a ver cuál es la primera actividad. And in this case, I'm going to put an image in which you are going to find some uh, statements, some sentences. And you are going to have five words. Vamos a tener una lista de cinco palabras y vamos a tener un total de diez oraciones. Vamos a utilizar esas cinco palabras para completar eh, o crear las collocations que eh, representa cada una de las oraciones. And in this case, you are going to have five adjectives that are commonly collocated with nouns. We are going to complete the adjective plus noun collocation in each sentence by adding one of the words. Lo único que vamos a hacer es decir dónde va cada una de las cinco adjetivos que tenemos ahí. Ustedes van a tener tiempo para leer las oraciones, para pensar cuáles son las combinaciones, ¿verdad? O las mejores combinaciones que aparecen ahí. So, give me a moment. I'm going to put the image here. And... 
and then I'm going to give you time to complete the activity. Okay, give me a moment. I'm going to put the image here. Okay. Here it is. Uh-huh. Yes, I think it is complete. Ok, aquí está el ejercicio. Son 10 oraciones. Ustedes tienen que leer las 10 oraciones y decidir cuál es la palabra que queda mejor con ese eh, nombre, ¿verdad? Acuérdense que ahí tenemos el espacio y obviamente en ese espacio es donde va el, eh, el adjetivo. Y el que le sigue, pues, ya saben que es el nombre que va a completar este... Eh, it's a collocation. So I'm going to give you five or six minutes to read the sentences and to uh, say what is the best combination that we can give to these uh, collocations. Vamos a tener de cinco a seis minutos para poder completar este ejercicio. So let's begin reading the statements.
Give me a moment. Okay, we are going to see if you have the answers for these um, for these statements. We are going to begin with the number one. You can write your answers on the chart if you want, or you can say what is the word that you use for the first one. And in this case, it said, our flight was canceled due to D, and we have the word wind. And we have the option, strong, heavy, bad, long, and high. What is the best option? Strong. Strong. Oh, very good. In the number one is a strong wines. Okay, I'm going to take this one here. Okay, very good. Excellent. Next one, number two. We were all devastated when we hear the... Strong, heavy, bad, long, high news. Bad. Bad. Excellent. Bad news. Number three. After the rain, the park was completely floated. The strong, heavy, bad, long, or high rain. Strong. Strong. Okay, you said a strong rain. Ah, someone else said heavy. Okay, in this case, we have heavy rain. Recuerden que es por el sonido, ¿verdad? Nosotros eh, decimos a ah, una tormenta fuerte y podemos decir a strong rain, una, una lluvia fuerte. But they said heavy rain porque es una lluvia fuerte, pesada, ¿verdad? Que deja... Um, Podemos decir pequeñas inundaciones. So in this case, it's heavy rain. Number four, he earns a salary working as a banker in the city. A strong, heavy, but long and high salary. High. Oh, good. High. Ha excellent. High salary. Next one, number five. It is a way from London to Dundee. We want to get there in a day. It's a strong, heavy, but long or high way from London to Dundee. Long. long. Excellent. Long way. Very good. Number six. John's a 
a strong, heavy, but long, high smoker. Bad. Bad smoker? Ah. We have another word, heavy smoker. What do you think? Bad or heavy? Bad. Un mal fumador? Bad. Bad. Or heavy. Or strong. Heavy. Okay. Oh. En ese uh -huh. caso, si utilizamos el bad smoker, estaríamos diciendo que es un mal fumador. And in this mm -hmm. case, we are talking about someone that smokes a lot. Heavy? Eh, very good. A heavy smoker. Some of you said heavy. So in this case, it's a heavy smoker. And it says he's always got a cigarette in his mouth. Siempre tiene un cigarro en su boca. Entonces, es un heavy smoker. Number seven, due to cost of fuel, people are using their car less. Estamos hablando del costo de la gasolina. A strong, heavy, bad, long, or high cost? High. High. High cost. Very good. El alto costo de la gasolina. I am not surprised he's got a sash. A strong, heavy, but long or high breath. He eats garlic with every meal. Oh, very good. We have the answer already. But breath. Un mal aliento. ¿Por qué tiene mal aliento? Porque come ajos en todas las comidas. Number nine, I'll need a coffee if I am going to stay awake for the meeting. Estamos hablando de café porque tiene una reunión. Pero, ¿qué tipo de café? Tenemos a strong, bad, heavy, high, long. What kind? Strong. Strong coffee. Ah. Strong coffee. Very good. A strong coffee. Un café fuerte, un café amargo. And the last one, number 10. Uh, I hadn't seen him in a time. So it was uh, lovely to catch up. No lo he visto por, y tiene la palabra tiempo. A strong, heavy, but long or long. high time. Bad. No lo he visto. Ajá. Es long. Ah, ok. Long time. Very good. No lo he visto por un largo tiempo. So, eh, fue muy bonito, fue muy, eh, podemos decirlo, uh, sí, podemos traducirlo como bonito. Fue muy bonito eh, tener esta reunión. So, in this case, you are seeing the use of these collocations. We are making... Um, new like short phrases in which we are um, putting words together to have a meeting. Tenemos, uh, I mean, to have a, a, a meaning. Tenemos palabras que se unen para formar un, eh, una nueva frase, ¿verdad? A strong winds, que en este caso estamos hablando de vientos fuertes que van juntos, no lo vamos a separar, lo vamos a aprender juntos. Bad news, noticias malas. Heavy rain, una lluvia pesada, una lluvia fuerte. High salary, un salario alto, o sea, un buen salario. Eh, long way, es un largo camino, un camino que lleva mucho tiempo recorrer. Heavy smoker, un eh, fumador compulsivo, pesado, ¿verdad? Eh, high cost, el costo alto, algo caro. Bad breath, mal aliento, que le huele, ¿verdad? El aliento. A strong coffee, un café fuerte, amargo, negro. And long time, tiempo, eh, un largo tiempo, ¿verdad? De no haber visto a una persona. So, this is one of the activities, and I'm going to share with you the second one, but 
If you can see, we have just three minutes. So in this case, you're going to see what is the second activity about, and you're just going to read this um, exercise. And I think I'm going to share with you the other two as a practice. Voy a agregar los otros como una práctica para que ustedes puedan eh, hacer esta práctica después. Tell me, Marina. Este, fíjense que yo quisiera que tal vez mañana, en la clase de mañana, me ayudara un poco en unos ejercicios de la plataforma que me salen mal. Ah, Por ok. Favor. Sí, sí, no hay ningún problema. Usted solo me dice en cuál ejercicio es y vamos a tratar de resolverlos al inicio de la sesión. Va, está bien, muchas gracias. You're welcome. Okay, I'm going to share with you. Let me stop this one. And let me look for the image. That is this one. And in this uh, exercise, you are just going to match the adjectives with the noun. Aquí simplemente es buscar la pareja ideal, podemos decir, um, related to, to these uh, collocations. Let me show you what I am talking about. Ustedes solo van a buscar la pareja que corresponde. We have the first line is related to the adjectives. Está relacionada con los adjetivos. La segunda está relacionado con los nombres. Y ahora nosotros tenemos que ver cuál va con cuál. We have double, big, good, side, upset, main, illy, serious, healthy, and private. Then we have riser, lock, mistake, effects, bed, course, stomach, school, accident, and diet. And you need to look for the couple. Aquí ustedes lo que van a hacer es buscar las parejas que quedan bien. But this one, we are not going to do it right now because we just have like, I think one minute or less to end this session. This one is like just a practice. You can do it as a practice. And I'm going to add other exercises that you can use as a practice of the collocation. Van a ser como prácticas para que nosotros podamos eh, entender cuál es el uso de los collocations y ver si estamos en lo correcto, ¿verdad? Si entendimos y si logramos entender el uso de los collocations. So, we are going to uh, end the session here. And we are going to see each other tomorrow. I just want to say uh, something else. Please uh, stay safe. Uh, we are having like uh, this kind of situation right now. So uh, stay safe and we are going to uh, see each other tomorrow. Thank you, teacher. Thanks to you. See you tomorrow. See you. See you tomorrow. See you. See you. Good night. Good night.